For most people, the days of the lone developer are long gone. The great majority of software today is built by teams. And this means that modern software development tools are used primarily by people working together. Using a set of tools designed to work together can have some real advantages. I mean, for example, connections between the tools can make it easier to hand off code between different functions like development and test. And just as important, answering questions that span tools gets easier. If you need to know, for example, which test found a certain bug in code that addresses a certain requirement, unified development tools can let you do this. The truth is that integrated tools can make the process of creating software significantly more effective. Achieving this is the goal of Visual Studio 2010. This latest release of Microsoft's development environment provides a unified set of tools for a variety of development needs. It's meant to be a modern foundation for what's become known as Application Lifecycle Management, ALM. The best way to get a handle on this large product family is to start with a broad look at its components and how they fit together. The center of the Visual Studio story today is Team Foundation Server TFS. Every other part of the product connects to TFS, and it acts as a central hub throughout the development process. TFS stores and manages requirements and bugs and tasks and other information. It also provides version control and build management and test case management and reports based on all of this information. Another primary piece of Visual Studio 2010 is the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. Millions of developers today use this IDE, either on its own or with earlier versions of TFS. One thing to note here is that in the previous release of this technology, Visual Studio meant just the IDE, while the entire suite was called Visual Studio Team System. In the 2010 release, everything is now called Visual Studio 2010. The Team System brand has been dropped. And so when I say just the IDE here, I mean just the Visual Studio IDE. VS 2010 also includes Team Explorer. This tool focuses on letting people access the information in TFS, like requirements and build status. It runs on its own, and it also runs inside the Visual Studio IDE. And while some development teams work solely in a Visual Studio world, many do not. Lots of organizations build applications using both .NET and Java, for example. And so to help developers using Eclipse-based IDEs work with Visual Studio, the product includes an Eclipse plugin called Team Explore Everywhere that allows access to TFS data from Eclipse. Another component, one that's new with the 2010 release, is Microsoft Test Manager, MTM. Testing is a critical part of software development. And while the VS IDE includes testing support, it's focused on testing done by people with development skills. MTM focuses more on manual testing. It's a tool for generalist testers rather than developers. One more important piece of this product set is lab management. This component lets developers and testers create and manage virtual machines, VMs, for a test lab. Using VMs can be simpler, faster, and cheaper than doing testing on real physical machines. And so lab management is meant to make this possible. And as the diagram shows, it's implemented as part of TFS. All I've described so far are components that are part of Visual Studio 2010 itself. But other technologies are also commonly used with this product set. For example, designers can use Expression Studio to help create user interfaces then store their interface definitions in TFS. Through Internet Explorer or some other web browser, pretty much all of the stakeholders in the development process can potentially have access to the information in TFS. They don't have to go through the IDE, so people who aren't developers can also look at what's going on. 
VS 2010 also allows creating a SharePoint-based portal for accessing things like documentation and team calendars and dashboards that show information from TFS. Another option is to work with the data in TFS through Excel. In fact, VS 2010 provides a set of Excel workbooks and reports to make this easier to do. And for people who use Microsoft Project, this tool can also be used with VS 2010. It lets people do things like create Gantt charts based on requirements stored in TFS. Modern software development depends on a diverse set of tools. Integrating those tools makes sense. Providing that integrated set of diverse development tools is the goal of Visual Studio 2010.